I, I will no wise cast you out. I don't care how wicked you've been and how bad you've been and how ugly you've been and how wretched you've been, how ungodly you've been. He said, come unto me and I will give you rest. Come unto me and I will give you peace. Our peace is through Jesus Christ. If it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your love, wasn't for your grace, I don't know, I don't know where I'd be without you. If it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you. Praise the name, Lord Jesus Christ. We're excited what God's getting ready to do in the house of God today. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. You don't want to miss the three services. And I am so blessed I get to preach all three services, 10, 11, and 6 p.m. God is going to be good in the house. I'll be back right after this. You don't want to miss that Wednesday night service. It's an awesome time in the Lord where I get to preach. I get to pray for public, uh, you know, folks. That I, I have more time to give personal ministry. Make your plans to be with us every Wednesday night right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. Great things are happening Wednesday night, 7.30. We'll see you in the house. You don't want to miss Friday morning. Every Friday morning, great things are happening. I will be praying for the sick. If you need a miracle from God, you want to be here every Friday morning at 10.30. It is called a miracle service because miracles take place. Make your plans to be with us Friday morning, 10.30. Bring someone that needs a word from God. You don't want to miss that Friday morning service. God is going to be doing great things Wednesday night in the Word and my tonight at 6 p.m. Yes, we still do Sunday night service because God is in the house every Sunday night. And just about a month away is winter camp meeting. Wow, I can't wait till the first Sunday of December winter camp meeting and Reverend Welton Lane will be preaching and singing. And, and then on Monday night is Dr. James Payne. You see him everywhere preaching on TV and, and, and then up on Tuesday night. I, I, I'm going to just take you just in a little bit into Reverend Randy Coggins, an anointed man of God. And what he also knew is when Goliath showed up on the scene and everyone else was afraid to go out and fight him because of his history of killing people, he said, greater is he that is within me than he that is within this world. And they tried to put armor on him, but the armor didn't fit. And he said, I don't need armor where I'm going because I know the man that created this armor. I know the man that created this valley. I know the man that created my praise. And something began to happen. And he praised God. And he got the stone. And he hit Goliath in the head. And the stone didn't kill him. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But the stone knocked him out. I feel the glory in here. And God says, what I gave you is the power to knock the enemy out because your weapon is not big enough to kill the enemy but everything the enemy has will eventually come into your hands and you're going to use it I feel the glory in here in order to defeat the enemy and when Goliath was laying in the ground when Goliath was laying on the ground he had no power anymore and David grabbed Goliath's sword and said I'm going to cut your head off with the weapon you going to kill me with I'm going to cut your head off with the weapon they said I would die with and the weapons are war of our warfare are not carnal but I am going to keep pressing I'm going to keep moving I'm going to keep walking and I'm stepping into my new dimension I'm stepping into my territory I'm stepping oh and then I'll get to be preaching Wednesday night and Thursday night as Dr. Gardner God has not given you the spirit of fear I couldn't just touch her and command her to have a miracle. I had to deal with the fear that was trying to cripple her body. If she would have succumbed to it, she would be crippled today. But when I walked back there, I said, Sister Tay, the devil is a liar. 
It's called illegal entry for the enemy to come into the house of God while the saints is praising and magnifying God and try to take you out. Have the devil lost his mind? Do we understand that this is God territory? Do we understand that this building has been sanctified with prayer? Do we understand that the anointing of resides in the pews? Do we understand that fasting and prayer has gone on in the building? Do we understand that you are blood bob baptized born again believer? Do we understand that the power of life and death is in your mouth do we understand that you got power with God I walked up to her I said do you believe God she said I believe and she couldn't even get it work she said I believe and when she said I, believe, I just took her mouth and straightened it back up and I told the devil now if you bad try it again I said we're gonna bust you up every time you walk up in here see you can't have no fear and have power you gotta have enough power to tell the devil if you bad cross that line I know I ain't got nothing but two dollars in my bank but I'm not gonna be evicted I'm not gonna lose my car I'm not gonna lose my mind I'm not gonna lose the victory I'm not gonna lose what I have I'm not gonna lose my joy I'm not gonna lose no sleep I'm not gonna lose my peace I'm not gonna lose the, I'm not losing I've lost everything that I'm gonna lose and I'm not losing another thing I got faith and power and I believe God and my miracle is in my mind Oh, everybody in Jacksonville knows Dr. Gardner. And then on Friday night, the psalmist himself, one of the preachers, preachers that I know is Pastor Clint Brown. Oh, get ready. I know he used to be the music leader, worship leader for, uh, for Rod Parsley and been in Orlando as pastor for many years. And one of the preachers in the word, I'm telling you now, up on Friday night is Pastor Clint Brown. I came to tell somebody in Jacksonville, it will be done. Sit here. Ooh, we don't like that. We don't like that. I can feel the resistance. I don't like sitting here. Sit when until. Until what? He said, until I take. Come here, Nero. Come here, Nero. Like this. Sit like this. Until they say the thing that's been in your way. The thing that's been stopping you, you thought it was the devil. But if you'll sit here and be patient, I'll make, say make, which means to create through time. I'll start taking your enemy that's been keeping you from me. And I'll make your enemy help you get to your next level. Because I'm going to take your enemy and I'm going to bend him and break him until he's in this position. Come here. Come here. Step up there on him. And I will make your enemy your footstool. And what you couldn't reach by yourself, now you can reach it because, oh, y'all ain't hearing me in this place tonight. Uh, you need to touch two or three people and say, I'm about to get up. And Adam, you thought you could get it on your own, but God let trouble show up so trouble could push you to the next level. Who am I preaching to tonight? Somebody needs to give him a crazy praise. Somebody needs to give him a crazy shout. Push five people say, I'm going higher. Oh, you see what I mean? It's going to be anointed, world-shaking time here at the Paxson Revival Center Church, three morning service, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Closer we get, we will tell you more about all the services. But I'm excited what God is going to be doing here today. Today is the day. People are hurting today. Yes, there'll be people that need a miracle the first week of December, but there's people hurting today. Your world's falling apart today. You've got to be here today. God wants to do something in your life today. Miracles are taking place. Lives are being changed. Enter the preaching of God's Word at this time. Life more and Monday. Abundant. And the fourth thing is uh, he's going to cover us with the wings of mercy. I, I don't know about you, but I need the mercy of God on me. Uh, why? Because there's some things that I don't deserve uh, that God says I could have. Uh, as he began to tell us in the book of Exodus chapter 25 and verse number 20, uh, he said the cherubims are covered uh, with the wings on high uh, and the wings would cover towards the mercy seat. God said, I want you to have mercy. Uh, I want to give you mercy. Where 
where you don't deserve it, I want to give you mercy. I want to give you mercy. You don't deserve it. But upon the mercy seat was the wings. And the wings were covered there. The wings were facing each other. The wings were facing. The cherubims were facing towards the mercy seat. God said, I want to put mercy upon you. I want you to have the Shekinah glory upon you. I want to put you, when you come unto me, I will no wise cast you out. I don't care how wicked you've been and how bad you've been and how ugly you've been and how wretched you've been, how ungodly you've been. He said, come unto me and I will give you rest. Come unto me and I will give you peace. Our peace is through Jesus Christ. He said, I want you to come to me so I can reconcile you back to the Father. We were created in his likeness and his image. Adam and Eve messed up. But God said, I want to come back to let you have life. And then he said, I want to bring you under the wings of trust. See, everything that we walk on and the walk of faith, Brother Snow, is trust. It's all about trust. We don't have any concrete. The only thing that we have is faith to walk by. The wings, I'm going to put you under the wings. It said in Psalms chapter 36 and verse number 7. He said, how excellent is thy loveness, kindness. O God, therefore, if the children of men put their trust under the shadow of the wings. Something to shatter us, to cover every mistake we ever made in our life. Something to cover every sin that we've ever made in our life. Something to cover us. What I'm talking about this morning. Why is, what is the church here for? Why are we here? We are here only one reason, and that's to bring man back to God. We're not here only because what the church can do for us, but we're here to bring mankind back to God. We're here to tell mankind and to tell people they're only waiting for them to spend eternity in heaven is to get back to God. And over and over again, I can read that where he said, uh, he also said, it shall be the wings of refuge. David knew what it was to run him through the refuge. As he said in Psalm 17 and 6, I call upon thee, for thou wilt hear me, O God, and incline unto me to hear my speech. Uh, show me thy marvelous kindness. This is where the wings are. This is the covering of God. Oh, that thou mayest say the right hand and put trust in thee that, in you that rise up against them. Show me and keep me as the apple of your eye and hide me under the shadow of your wings. I don't know about you, but I want to be hid under the shadow because what I found out this morning, if we will get under the shadow of the almighty God, the devil will not be rocking your boat and the devil will not get you wanting to give up and quit. If you stay in the presence of God and stay under the shadow of God, I used to be in front of the country and I would watch my grandpa's uh, uh, he, he'd have hens running all over the all over the yard and on the porches and hens and roosters everywhere uh, and all of a sudden you hear one of the little hens saying chick 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 making a chicken noise uh, uh, I don't understand what it is uh, exactly but making a little chicken noise and, and all of a sudden you hear beep, 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 and you see all the little bitties uh, come running everywhere uh, and all of a sudden uh, the mother hen she would raise her wings up uh, and all of a sudden, you see all of those little biddies. Now, I don't understand how in the world all of those biddies, all 12 or 14 of those biddies, got up under that hen and you couldn't see them. I like to think about it the same way. It's for me to be hid with Christ and God that when the enemy comes and I will look out there and there'd be a buzzard, they'd be some kind of an enemy. And the mother will see it coming. Can I tell you right now, church, y'all need to hear this one part that God is saying, you need to draw nigh unto me and get under my wings there is trouble coming there is trouble coming and I am your only safety you need to hide in me you need to get lost in me you need he said don't you remember what I done for the Egyptians how that I brought them out and there was no feeble one among them how do I believe you get under the place of the wings that is the place of rejoicing he said in the book of Psalms 63 and 7 because thou have been my help therefore in the shadow of the wings I'm going to rejoice I'm going to rejoice when I get up under there huh? because I know huh, what you've done for me. Huh? I know that how you brought out huh, the children of Israel. Huh? I know what he's going to do for me. Huh? God says I'm going to take care of you. Huh? Now I want to just talk a little bit about the wings because the wings which is not something that you would think that would be mighty but what does those wings do for the bird? It covers it in the middle of the rain. It covers it 
in the middle of the heat. It covers it in the middle of the storm. It's very lightweight, has no strength whatsoever. One thing about a wing, it's flexible. You need to learn to be flexible. Quit trying to have it your way. Quit trying to say it's got to be your way. How do you, because there's something about that wing is so strong. It's so strong it would hold. It protects something. How do you, whenever you begin to talk about the eagle in his eyesight, you talk about the ability of the eagle because something will bring you out. God said, I will bring you out. Joseph knew about the God that he served. Joseph knew that he had a, a plan on his life. Now, when he got the plan of the coat of the many colors, his dad didn't say, son, I'm giving you a coat of many colors. And when he seen the vision in the dream, in the dream, it didn't show him all the process. It just showed him what the end was going to be. He didn't know that one time that he would spend 13 years in prison. But 13 years was not long enough for him to lose his faith. 13 years he was still holding on that God was going to bring him out. 13 years he knew that God had a, a shelter for him. This is why David said in the book of Psalms chapter 91 and 1, He that dwelleth in the secret place up under the shadow of the Almighty. Up under the wings of the Almighty. He that dwelleth. This is not a Sunday morning visit. He that dwells. It's not touching and uh, playing touch three times a week. But he that dwells. He that thinks upon him. His mind stayed upon me. I will keep you in perfect peace. You say, Pastor, you don't have all the storms. Let me tell you something. Every house has storms. Every family has storms. If you put a pair of shoes on or if you ain't got shoes to put on and you ain't got legs or feet to put the shoes on, every single one in this world has a problem. It's how do you relate to the problems. It's how do you relate to the trial. It's how do, I was talking to one woman of God this morning and she said, I just don't crawl up uh, and quit because I know that I'm a woman of God and I'm going to stand and I'm going to hold fast to the promises of God. What I'm talking to about you today, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God I will say unto the Lord in the middle of my storm he is my refuge he is my fortress and in God am I going to trust if I lose the wings I ain't got a covering if I lose the power of God I can't make it if I lose the promises of God I will surely shall, uh, surely knowing that he's going to deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from every pestilence he shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. Where can I trust? I trust when I hide myself up under him. I trust when I spend some time alone with God. See, God said, I'm going to get you when you come to me. He said, I want to bring you out. As he said, he said, I brought the children of Israel out, but I brought them to me. God said, I'm trying to bring you out to bring you to me. God said, I want you to come to me. I want you to hide yourself in me. I want you to surrender yourself to me. He said, this truth shall be a shield and a buckner. What is the truth? Everything that God said was going to happen. And some of you are in the wilderness of discouragement and the wilderness of pain. You've lost loved ones and you're going through financial your problems. Let me tell you, he said in the book of Psalms chapter 17 and 8, he's going to keep me as a half apple of his eye. What is he doing? Oh, maybe none of you had, a, you had to get some cherry points with your teacher, but I had to get some points with my teacher, Brother Carl, and what I learned. I get me an apple, and I uh, it had wax on it. It had little scuffs on it. And all the way to school, I would shine up that apple. I would get every little mark off of it. If it had a little scar, I would pick that little mark off. Why? When I, I, I give the apple to the teacher, I want it to be very nice. I want it to be shiny. God said, I'm taking you right now, and I'm polishing you up to make you the apple of my eye. Hey, I'm taking some things off of you that has been on you for a long time. I'm, oh, oh, my, 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 she kind of, my, hey. He said, I'm bringing you out of some things in your life. If you want to be God's apple, then he's going to polish you. He ain't going to 
just give you uh, all broken up, all bruised up, uh, but he's going to polish you. Uh, and the way he polishes you is take part of you away. Uh, what I took off of the apple uh, used to be in the apple uh, and got on the outside of the apple. Uh, but God said, what I'm trying to do, uh, I'm trying to get what is on you, uh, in you, out of you, uh, so that I can cover you and to make you become the apple of my eye. Psalms 18 to 10, he said he did fly high on the wings. He said, oh, be merciful, God. Be merciful unto me. My soul trust in ye. In the shadows of the wing shall be my refuge. How do we get from the little egg? We worked our way out. God said, I helped you get out of the little egg. I give you enough air to survive while you were still in the egg. I give you the ability to get in the nest, but I didn't create you to stay in the nest. I created you to fly. I didn't create for some enemy to destroy you. I created for you to have the ability to be able to take every storm that come your way. He said, I'm going to rejoice in the, in the wings and I'm going to rejoice. Oh, I'm excited what God is doing. And don't forget just three, uh, about three, about three weeks from now, four weeks from now is winter camp meeting. 2018. People from across America will be here. Put it on your calendar. The Reverend Walton Lane will be preaching. James Payne will be preaching. That, that Randy Cox and I'll be preaching and the Dr. B will be preaching and Clint Brown will be preaching and the list goes on and on and on and men and women of God that will be ministering breaking chains on people's lives Hallelujah. but I thank God for what God's going to be doing here today three great services and I get to preach all three of them I love to preach I love to preach I love to brag on God I got, I'd love to tell of his goodness and his mercy don't deserve it but he gives it to us anyhow Hallelujah. that is at 10, 11 and 6 p.m. God's doing great things remember if you want a word from Pastor Steve on Facebook. I don't do birthdays and hallelujah. I don't do uh, the drama, but I do like to drop in and give a word from heaven. You got to be here. All you do is go to Facebook and just say, Pastor Steve Dobbs, and I will connect you. I'm excited what God is doing. If you want to know more about the church, go to PaxsonRevivalCenter.com. God is so good to us. Until we see you in one of these great Holy Ghost services is here today. May God bless you be with you. Winter camp meeting 2018. Get ready, Jacksonville. Get ready. God is getting ready to do something. Winter camp meeting 2018. None other than Reverend Walton Lane upon Sunday night. Yeah, Jesus is already here. We're going to have a time. Talking about a healing good time. We're going to have a time. I, do, I know you feel with the Holy Ghost. Do you want more? You mean this is not all there is? No, there's a whole new world waiting on us in the supernatural realm. Oh, Dr. James Payne, get ready. Dr. James Payne is going to rock this house with his singing, his preaching, his ministry. If you need a word from God, be with us on Monday night or winter camp meeting. That is December the 3rd. But you have somebody preaching on freedom and preaching that you can be set free, that God can heal your marriage, that God can bless your life. Oh, hell's going to fight you. You ought to rejoice this morning that you're being fought. You ought to rejoice this morning that hell, amen, is coming against you. You must be doing something right. Oh, then on December the 4th, there's Randy Coggins. Get ready. Randy Coggins is going to build your faith. He's going to tell you you can walk where the devil said you can't walk, that you can be who God says you can be. Oh, you don't want to miss Randy Coggins on Tuesday night. But every time they talk about you, ah, thank God I'm going to another level. Every time they steal from you, thank God I'm going to another level. Every time they leave you, thank God I'm going to another level. Because he says every attack and every enemy... I'm making it your footstool. So the greater the attack, the higher the footstool. The greater the attack, the bigger the elevation. Somebody say, I'm going higher. And then on Wednesday night, I get to preach. 
cross. Jesus is not a man on the cross, a man in the tomb, but he said, I am alive forevermore. And he said, the keys that I have, what kind of keys? I give you keys that you can lock death. I give you keys that you can open life. I give you keys to get them out of prison. I give you keys to get them off of drugs. I give you keys to get them off of alcohol. I give you tree. And he said, I'm looking for somebody that will take the keys and help somebody to understand it. And then on Thursday night, you don't, moan, you don't want to miss Dr. Beast. He will be shaking his house with a word from God and words of prophecy. Look at somebody and say, what's working on the inside of me is all I need to come out of what I'm going through. What he has deposited on the inside of me is enough to rock my world. When I understand that I'm going through because he wants me to lean and depend on him, then I will understand that when he gets good and ready, he's going to shake, rattle, and roll. He's going to make every demon and devil that came to discourage and destroy me step back and take his hands off. And on Friday night is none other than Pastor Clint Brown. Get ready, get ready, Jacksonville, for Pastor Clint Brown coming back. You're going to receive word that's going to shake your life, that's going to elevate your faith. Because we are tired of waiting, we get leftovers, we get stale miracles, we get stale blessings, we get after, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying, we get what nobody else wants. You need to look at somebody and say, wait, wait, because my Bible said they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faith. Teach me, Lord, how to look at somebody and say, sit here until no, tell them like you're hollering at your kids. Say, sit here until Oh, we're excited what God is going to do right here at Winter Camp Meeting 2018. There'll be three morning services, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, and Friday morning. Get ready. Pastors from across America will be here, and we're so honored it's going to be in your own city. You don't have to get a plane ticket. You don't have to ride a train. You just get here. God's going to do great things. Oh, don't miss Winter Camp Meeting 2018. We'll